before all of you keyboard warrior the beep out of this video, we're doing a meetup, uh, an NMO pop-up shop meetup. I miss your faces, I wanna see you guys. Next week, the 14th, there might be some other creators there. Also, anytime somebody buys something, a t-shirt, whatever from NMO, we're gonna give away something. It might be a gimbal or a drone or it might be a phone case that you don't really need, but you're gonna get something. Uh, we're gonna keep it interesting. Uh, so join us. It's raining. It's not really the, the one wheel kind of day today. It's, it's raining ki kind of heavily. <sighs> Tragedy, spilt my coffee everywhere. How are the videos coming? Awesome. Great. We just filmed a podcast with the legendary Sean from My Self Reliance. What an interesting guy. Probably my favorite podcast I've done so far. Very interesting talks about world ending, going off the grid, all that stuff. Uh, also uh, did a podcast with Lizzie Pierce. That was, that was a fun one. How are you liking the podcast? I love it. And I'm reading through agreements. Executive producer. <laughs> that doesn't even feel real. If you're any sort of filmmaker right now, chances are you edit. And the biggest question is, which editing program should you be putting your time and money into? And it's kind of a big investment because you don't wanna be spending tons and tons of hours on a program that you're gonna have to dump a few months from now. You don't wanna buy a whole bunch of plugins for a program that you don't wanna use a year from now. So it's kind of a big deal. Should you be switching from Premiere to Final Cut? Should you be switching from Final Cut to Premiere or just sticking with what you have right now? Sorry, Da Vinci, I haven't quite ventured there yet, but maybe I should. And to me, there's kind of a clear winner right now, more than ever on what I'm recommending to people. And also let me know if you're on the same page or if you think totally differently, because I'm very curious. Is it just me going through all this? Or are you guys also facing the same challenges. And we're gonna look at the two programs from the different areas of editing or the workflow. First being project management, then the editing, motion graphics, audio editing, color grading, and then the final export to figure out which editing program you should be investing in. Project management. I don't know if this is just a bias because I learned Premiere first, but overall, I feel like Premiere Pro is just more intuitive in terms of making new projects and setting up a new video and all of that stuff. It might just be because I'm not a fan of how the libraries work in Final Cut. They just balloon in size really quickly and you're constantly having to delete user-generated data and that kind of stuff. I kind of just feel like Premiere is much simpler in making a project for a video and then you can have multiple sequences for if you have different edits or anything like that. One point for Premiere project workflow. Editing, by far the most important thing, obviously, <laughs> in a program that you edit videos in. Here's where the two differ a lot in. And I gotta say, I think I like Premiere's overall way of editing better. I'm still not a big fan of the whole magnetic timeline. It works really well for like simple little edits, you know, one track, maybe a few clips on top. As soon as you get into like multi-track editing, it becomes a real nightmare real fast. So for more complex videos, I very much like Premiere and that was kind of one of the big reasons why I switched over back to Premiere again. That is if it worked. The amount of bugs is absolutely horrendous. Literally daily we are dealing with this bug or this issue things that are actually slowing us down every single day. Not to mention, I had not heard the fans on my M1 Max MacBook Pro not once until I switched to Premiere. So I'd say Final Cut Pro is totally fine for anybody that's not doing anything too complex. If you're doing really complex edits, then Premiere, <laughs> if it actually worked. I really wish Final Cut had an option to just turn off the magnetic timeline. It'd be really nice and just go to like a normal basic track mode, but we don't have that. But I'm still gonna give this one to Final Cut because it actually works. It's not bug ridden, it's not glitching the whole time. By the way, I didn't actually film any of that footage I'm editing with in this video. 
I, I wish I did because it's really beautiful. Did you know that ArtGrid, not only is it like the most affordable place to get stock footage, but it's also really cool that if you find a clip that you like, it's not just one clip. There's always minimum three, if not hundreds of clips from that same scenario. So like this boxing footage is incredible. You can make a full edit without leaving the comfort of your home. Right now you get two free months off, so you could literally start like a side hustle where you just edit for clients using this high quality stock footage, or you could work on a really high quality editing reel with all the footage from ArtGrid and then pitch yourself to some clients. I think that would work pretty well. And because ArtGrid isn't just a bunch of random footage slapped together, it's way easier to tell stories and to add actual high quality B-roll that tells your stories better without having to spend hours of time filming them or thousands of dollars setting up those shoots. One simple license gives you unlimited access to the entire catalog and get this, when you download something, that's yours forever to use wherever you want, even if you stop your subscription. Sometimes you gotta work smarter, not harder. Don't do all the heavy lifting, let ArtGrid help Help you out make your videos look way more professional with art grid thank you so much for sponsoring this video when it comes to motion graphics there's no question in my mind that premiere has the best potential because of the connection to after effects you can do such incredible things inside of after effects if i don't know if you guys saw the insane motion graphics we made with my friend grant the nostalgia pack it's absurd that those are literally just mogurts that you just type in your text and boom, you're done. They're so fast and easy to use. The quality is through the roof. Or the Scando pack that we made, literally all of the assets that you would need for a YouTube channel, everything from intros to title cards to before and afters, to subscribe to the channel, all of those graphics, just change the text, done, super easy to use, resize. And I love the tracking inside of After Effects. So many options, really high quality 3D tracking. That is, again, if it worked properly. It's so buggy. I literally tried to export the Nostalgia Graphics Pack video probably like 30 to 40 times because it would just stop at 30% and then just wouldn't continue. There's all these weird glitches and bugs inside of Premiere that just, yeah, they just, they kind of ruined the experience of editing just, just a little bit. The graphics looked incredible and I couldn't wait to share them with you except I couldn't export the video. And then Final Cut Pro actually has really great graphics nowadays and they work much more smoothly without any bugs and weird things happening. So with that in mind, I feel like this is actually more of a tie even though it should be a clear win for Premiere. When it comes to audio editing, I have no gripes with either program. I think both of them do a great job. I'm usually just literally taking my audio presets, slapping them on, changing the volume a little bit. Good to go. Both programs work great here, so tie. Color grading wise, overall, I like the design and UX of the Premier Lumetri controls better but the algorithms behind them, I feel like just don't work all that well. For example, like the temperature slider, I feel like it just never works that well. Or if you try to adjust just like the, the whites or the blacks, it just, it, the algorithm isn't curved and it's not smoothed out properly. So it just like, it doesn't look good. Or if you change the exposure down and you're trying to like correct the overexposure, the highlights just get just wasted. And then you're having to do so much adjustments. I feel like there's just, no finesse in, in the tools behind Premiere's Lumetri. And I, I could be nitpicking here. Now with Final Cut, the tools are really weird at first. You're like, what the, what is this? And like, it took me a while to get used to, but once you get used to them, they work really great. They're really fast and really smooth. I did used to use Colorista before in Premiere, but the problem is that the export ends up taking way longer and so I just found it to be not that useful anymore. It's again, neither is perfect, but the worst part about Premiere is that once you've color graded and you go to export it, your colors do not look anything like you color graded inside of Premiere. I do not understand why they still have this final cut. You color grade, export, it looks exactly the same. Premiere, you color grade and you export.
the contrast, the colors, everything is different. Now there is actually a, a way better fix than there ever has been now. Thanks to a guy named Axia on YouTube. I don't know what his real name. He made another LUT that you just export with and it looks very close to how you did it inside of Premiere. Great job on that. Go and subscribe to the guy. He's giving away that LUT for free, which you could be probably charging a crazy amount of money for because it works way better than anything else I've seen. Uh, so colors, I think more of a personal preference thing, but if I had to go one way or the other, I think I'm leaning more towards Final Cut just for ease of use. And then let's talk exporting. We all know where this is going. Final Cut, just insanely fast, works really well. Premiere, not as fast, <laughs> doesn't work as well. Too many bugs, too slow. Final Cut is just way better at this part, to the point where with Premiere, if I make like a small mistake in a video, I just won't re-export it because it takes too much time. Whereas with Final Cut, even if it was a small mistake, small thing that I want to change, the color grading or something, I just re-export it because it takes no time at all. Premiere, my videos are suffering. Tyler's just going through back and forth. Lastly, let's talk for a second about two very important things, speed and price. In terms of speed, overall speed of the two programs, Final Cut is just so much faster than Premiere in all of the different ways, plus then you add on the bugs and the glitches, and it's just Final Cut for the win. And that would be okay if Premiere was a fairly cheap solution, except it's the most expensive <laughs> editing program and it is the most bug ridden. I do not understand what is going on at Adobe right now. They need to fix this, they need to get this under control because the amount of people that I'm seeing switching from Premiere to programs like Final Cut or DaVinci, which is completely free, I've never seen it before. I think at the very least right now, Adobe should be giving a discount on Premiere while they're trying to figure out all of their bugs and hopefully they're actually trying to figure them out because sometimes it doesn't feel like they are. Overall, I switched from Premiere to Final Cut about a year ago and I edited for a year on Final Cut. And the reason for that was Premiere was way too bug ridden and it was starting to get really slow. And my theory was when we get these new M1 chips from Apple, which are incredibly fast, Adobe would be having even more problems, more bugs, more glitches. And that's why I switched to Final Cut. And I think I was right. Now going back to Premiere again, it's honestly slowing down my business, which is a big, big problem. And that's why in good conscience, I cannot recommend Premiere right now. If you're starting out, I cannot recommend Premiere to you because it is bug ridden and slow and it's really expensive compared to the other options. If you're already using Premiere, then it's it's a different question. I'm, I'm constantly going back and forth. But if you're new getting into filmmaking, right now I would say stay away from Premiere. For me personally, I'm very torn. I, I wanna go back to Final Cut for the speed and <laughs> the lack of headaches, but I really like the high quality graphics that I have in Premiere right now. So I'm like uh, going back and forth. We will see where we end up. And I wanna hear, what are your thoughts? Are you dealing with the same things? Are you having the same thought process as me right now? I wanna know what you guys are thinking. But I guess the big question is, do I need to finally really give Da Vinci a shot? All right, I hope you guys like this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.